Hey everyone, I'm gonna try to keep this short. I, I was making another video and it just ran ran long, so I'm I'm just uh, trying to keep it as short as possible. I did install the mini split in the shop. I haven't finished insulating, but it's working fantastic. Everything's staying cool here in the summer. So this video is gonna be about numbers. Uh, battery bank numbers, inverter numbers. So the battery bank, even though these are kind of mismatched as far as uh, these are the same brand technically, Life Power and EG or LL, just a different BMS. They are 100 amp hour batteries, which adds up to around 50, so 5,100 something uh, kilowatt hours. So what I'm discussing is, or what I'm wanting to discuss is, as far as the chemistry with lithium iron phosphate. So it's generally considered good practice to stay around 20 amps charging. So uh, you can push that. These can take 100 amps, I, I believe. So when it comes to charging these, in order to uh, you know get the longest life out of these, and I know some of it can definitely be pushed, but you would stay within 20 amps, 20, 30 amps, something like that. And some of the manufacturers are putting it on their specs now, EG4, Signature Solar, oddly enough, hasn't yet, but uh, Jacopur does, to stay with, you know, somewhere close to that 20 amp. They recommend 20 amps. So if it's a 100 amp hour battery and you were starting from zero, it would take five hours at the 20 amp. But the, they have a, um, in the BMS, they have a 20% cutoff. So it's not going to take that long if you're starting from the 20. And you can push that up, to be honest. I, I don't know what, it's going to depend on what the person decides and, and I guess what their, their research shows. But, you know, 30 amps, whatever. But it's still going to take some time. So the larger the bank, the more time it's going to take, obviously. So... When you consider these units, they come um, preset to 60 amps per unit. But they can output 120 amps of charging current. So that is at 48 volts. So just in case people are curious, it's not at 120 or 240 or whatever. It is at 48 volts. So if you were to just have this unit with lots of panels on it, uh, at set at 120 amps that is 5700 something watts of panels you would need just to be able to charge at its maximum so there's a lot of numbers here but that is something to keep in mind when you're paneling when you are deciding what you're gonna you know have to run your house if you wanted it to charge a bank like this which one unit could charge at 120 amps if you add 20 down the six batteries then it could charge them pretty much at the you know the, the rate that you would recommend for these then you've got to consider the house wanting to you know during in the morning hours and all that during the day using power also so that's the reason why you know sizing the system you, you got to consider those things how fast and uh you know how how quickly you want to charge the batteries versus you know how much usage you're going to have at the house then you have to consider if you are going to use the grid people that aren't going to be solely off grid if they're going to be using the grid keep in mind that if you're going to be charging a battery bank this size that or if you're going to be using the full potential that is 5700 watts a little over actually of charging that the grid would be i mean it's like charging an ev really uh off of the grid so uh, that is why you have that four gauge wire there because you've, you've got you know 5,000 something watts coming through if you want to charge the battery bank and be able to use uh, you know pass through that that's some heavy wattage that this thing the little things <laughs> can do here so it's better obviously to have more more units uh, split between the two and then each one can supply some amperage with solar 
to the batteries and then obviously the more panels that you can fit on there the better considering those factors of charging so you can go up from there and say you know hey i'd like to i'd like to be charging at 30 amps per battery so ideally people would probably uh you know size the bank as, as much as high and as large as you can then you have the discharge rate which a lot of people i don't know if they're considering but they recommend 30 amps per battery they can go up to 100 amps same as the charge 30 amps per battery um so if if you're looking at it that way 30 amps at 40 48 volts it's 1400 around 1450 watts that you're pulling from each battery that's an ideal setting so with a bank this size it's still only it's a little less than 9000 watts at an ideal discharge rate so uh, that is also something to, for everyone to keep in mind as far as discharging um, at an ideal rate you're looking at uh, close to 9,000 watts with six of these batteries. And that discharge rate goes for all the batteries also, that 30 amp discharge rate. So when you're sizing your battery bank, it's not just how long it can last in cloudy days and if you can keep your appliances going, it's how fast you want it to discharge to keep that chemistry healthy, the, the lithium iron phosphate. Obviously this wouldn't apply to a lithium ion or a a uh, lead acid, those are gonna be different chemistries. But how long do you want um, to keep things going is just one thing to consider as far as appliances and cloudy days and nighttime. It is how fast these batteries are discharging and how, how hard you're gonna be pulling them. So they can be stretched uh, in charge and discharge, but I, I think, in my opinion, it's something people don't consider um, and Will Prowse, again, I mean, the, he covers that as far as calendar aging, maybe affecting it before that. And, and, and that's probably true if you're not pushing them to the very limit. But it can ruin these batteries. You're not going to get that 20-year limit out of them if you're stretching them to that uh, aspect. And plus, you know, I think there's something else, one more thing to consider. I ended up putting new wires on these, but they send some pretty at least i don't know about jack Pier and uh sok but they send some teeny tiny little ring a dink wires if you are we're going to try to <laughs> push it to that type of charge rate that they can take these I, I did 80 amps in one of them one time and they they were hot so i don't plan on going past like 30 amps charging from now on um but i just wanted to kind of test and see what it could do but so that is what is supposed to be a short video on this. Um, these can each do 120 amps output of charge at 48 volts. And then these batteries ideally would be 20 charge, 30 discharge at an ideal setting. So uh, add those, multiply them, buy that 48 and, and figure out what your system is. Obviously, it's going to be a budget thing for people too, but this is uh, something that I didn't necessarily consider other than, you know, wanting a larger battery bank. And uh, I think something people need to keep in mind. Anyway, thanks for watching and uh, leave a comment down below if you have any questions on the numbers or maybe some comments as far as oh, I'm wrong on something. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thanks.